In general, hermetic compressors really shouldn't sound like a can full of marbles. Clearly something terrible happened to this one. This is a little 115 volt, one third horsepower to come see compressor from a three door kick cooler similar to this one. Medium temp, R134A. If I'm reading the serial number right, it was manufactured May 8th, 2013. Unfortunately, the condenser fan locked up one night after closing time. These units have no pressure control, so the poor compressor burned for hours, bouncing off the overload protector until staff discovered it the next morning. While cooler came back to life with a new fan motor and appeared to run fine, it went down again just a few weeks later. Upon arrival to the service call, I discovered the odd scene of a silent compressor drawing very low current, with system pressures completely equalized. Placing my hand upon the shell, I could feel something happening, but clearly all pumping activity had ceased. No heat rejected from condenser, and compressor itself was barely warm, while discharge and suction lines were both basically at ambient temp. While the refrigerant in the system was recovered to EPA standards, the compressor has been sitting a while, so any residuals might have boiled out of the oil, causing the inside to still be pressurized. I'm going to cut the stubs off where I'd sealed them with the torch, just to make sure I don't have any surprises when I cut the shell open. Hear that? Definitely still pressure in there. All right, that's opened up. Got my eye and ear protection on because I actually like my sensory organs to remain intact. Yeah, this blade isn't working so well. Just why I put down the cardboard. There we go. Let's see what we got in here. Can anyone else spot what's wrong in here? I, for one, did not have cracked discharge pipe on my bingo card, but here we are. This definitely wasn't damaged from the cut, because the cut happened way down here. This has completely detached. Also explains why this thing sounded like a can full of marbles. I was expecting something along the lines of a broken crankshaft or a broken conrod. This is new. Getting up close there, the discharge pipe really said enough is enough. You can even see where it was vibrating together as the compressor continued trying to run, even though the discharge would simply recirculate right back into the case. That explains why this thing was barely warm to the touch and running so quietly I had to put my hand on top to feel it was going at all. All right, how about a look at how that oil fared after all of its misadventures? Should be able to pour it out. Yeah, that's working. Can let the rest trickle out of the shell. Seems to track with my revised assessment. The failure was that discharge line, not lubrication failure from overheating as I originally suspected. Oil is ever so slightly dark considering the age of the unit. It seems in good shape. Any bits you see in there just from me cutting the shell open. Now that the oil's drained, let's see what we got to work with in here. I want to get the discharge pipe out of the way. Are these tens? No, they're not tens. Seven sixteenths. Let's see if these break loose easy, or if I gotta fight them. That one came right off. How about door number two? Both bolts appear to be identical. That was easy. Yeah, not quite sure what to make of these chambers. Down here, have the discharge port from the cylinder head have a crossover port between the large and the small, and the small one would obviously exit through that cap I just removed. I expected some sort of oil return or pressure relief in there. Maybe they're mufflers. Very interesting to see there is no internal pressure relief here, perhaps designed such that overheating and increased current would trip the overload protector before dangerous pressure built up. 134A runs at fairly reasonable pressure, so less risk of rupture than higher pressure refrigerant such as 404A. Going to pry off the electrical connector on the inside here. 
See if I can get the internals out of the shell. Much easier than the one which had the suction muffler melted into a puddle. Looks like E8 external torques for these bolts on the cylinder head. Let's see if they're cooperative as the previous two. If you're enjoying my antics, drop a like down below to help more people find this content, and let me know what you think in the comments. If you haven't already, consider subscribing for more garage shenanigans. You'll find additional info, links to my social media, and ways to support the channel in the description. All four bolts are finger tight now. Overall clamping force on the cylinder heads on these do not need to be crazy high. Ack. Guess that was it. I just needed to use the suction muffler as a handle. Kind of expected. The gasket did not survive popping the head off. I guess they fall apart. This one is clearly in much better shape compared to the one that had the burnout. The oil is still nice and clear, and there's not a coating of soot on all of the valves and valve seating surfaces. There's the tiniest bit of brown staining valve seat itself looks pretty good. There we go. Suction muffler with a screen. And the other side of the valve plate with its cylinder head. Little two port reed valve on this one. Got a large and a small, both supported by one spring here. Inside of the cylinder head looks pretty good. Only very, very slight discoloration. No sign of prolonged overheating coking of the oil. Gasket on this side appears to have remained intact. Similar to the cylinder head, the piston and cylinder wall also are in very good shape. There is no sign of copper plating or significant scoring of the bore. Piston appears undamaged and the moving assembly rotates very smoothly. Same deal on the bottom end. Spins nice and easily, no copper plating, and there's no play in the bearings. All in all, this compressor shows only minimal wear and tear consistent with its age. Had the discharge line not broken, it probably had some life left. It's inconclusive if the condenser fan issue caused or contributed to the failure, or if it merely correlated with the line cracking when it did. Bad luck for the restaurant owner, but there's really nothing we could have done differently. Hermetic compressors have zero serviceable parts, and it gave no outward signs of trouble up until it let go. It went right from holding temp perfectly to complete failure. If fan problem happened and had been discovered during business hours, could have saved a lot of stress on the compressor, but there's no guarantee that would have changed the outcome. Here's a couple video offerings you might want to check out after this one. I make content on a range of topics involving electronics, automotive, appliances, and more. Thanks for watching.